All right, looks like we're live. Uh, welcome everyone for tuning into today's uh, Test Talks Live. Uh, we have an exciting announcement in store today alongside with this episode. But before we get into everything, uh, we have both myself, William McKenzie, and Kenneth Garofalo of Tesla's Commons as your host, and Claire uh, Harrison of Tesla's Commons and the lead developer uh, behind Kakai Wallet. Uh, welcome, guys. How's everyone's Thanks. early afternoon or uh, night? I think it's your night, class. Yeah, it's night here now, so it's getting dark here. Good. Doing well. A little bit of rain out there, I think, even across the country down south, too. So we're hanging in there, wishing for better days, but we're here in the now, and we're excited for this episode. Yeah, there's a little bit of rain here, too, where I'm based. But uh, Kim, would you like to intro the, give the uh, giveaway we'll be doing? Yeah, absolutely. So for everyone watching right now, we are doing a giveaway of a Ledger Nano S that's engraved with the Tezos logo. So this is quite cool. All you have to do is pay attention in this episode. Near the end, before we go into the demo, we're going to announce a keyword. And for all the audience listening, you'll take that keyword, you'll enter it into the YouTube chat, and then we'll have a Nightbot select at random one winner, and we'll have instructions for you to follow once we announce the winner. So again, Pay attention, guys. We'll have that keyword announced right before the product demo here. Yeah, be sure to pay attention for that. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, class, would you mind telling the audience a bit about your background? Um, can you discuss kind of your education, work history, and uh, just tell everyone a bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, so I worked for Tesla's Commons for about a year, and... Uh, I started with the Kukai wallet uh, two years ago, right after Tesla's launched. Uh, so it has been an open source project uh, since then. And uh, uh, I was an early community member in the Tesla's project. And uh, my background is that uh, I studied uh, computer science with a master profile in secure systems. And before that, I was an engineer in the army or the air defense, more to say. And yeah, that's my background. And uh, before I got interested into Tesos, I was uh, pretty much a Bitcoin maximalist. Uh, now that's interesting. So you have <laughs> quite an impressive background. And hearing that you were previously a Bitcoin maximalist, I almost wonder what drew you into Tezos? What was the main factor that made you want to contribute to this ecosystem? Yeah, it, it was uh, actually when I read the white paper that I can kind of started to reconsider that uh, maximalistic view. And uh, it was uh, at the same time uh, Bitcoin had some problems uh, surrounding the governance, if you remember. Uh, it was just before it uh, had a split. So it was uh, uh, primarily the governance uh, model that was uh, really interesting because it, uh, it solved a problem that uh, Bitcoin obviously couldn't solve. And uh, also the proof of stake uh, was uh, very interesting because that's something that uh, people had talked about uh, uh, for a lot of time, but uh, uh, few project, few proof of stake projects uh, were out at that time. And uh, th then also the formal verification, because uh, that's uh, obviously really important to have if you uh, want to build uh, smart contracts. Uh, uh, that uh, should uh, hold a lot of value, then you need uh, uh, to prove uh, different properties for this uh, smart contract. Right. So all those three main points, you know, the, the forkless predictable government governance aspect, the proof of stake yeah. aspect, and of course, the formal verification within the smart contracts, very important. Um, those three main topics that we see a lot of people attracted into the Tezos ecosystem for. So that's some really great insight as to someone who was previously a Bitcoin maximalist. Now I'm, I'm sure you're a Tezos maximalist or close to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
and uh, also of course the community were really important as well because uh, testers have uh, always had a very active community and uh, one uh, and you could see that uh, during the uh, fundraiser that a, lo a lot of people believed in this idea uh, and uh, contributed uh, to making it a success and uh, i think it's really important to have that kind of uh, network effect because there's so many small uh, blockchain projects out there so uh, network effect is really important as well absolutely and so we know you have a big announcement here regarding the kukai wallet and before we uh release that announcement i guess w would you just give us a little bit of an intro uh to what is the kukai wallet uh, maybe how long it has been around and what significance it holds within the Tezos ecosystem. Yeah, so Kukai have been around since in June 2018. So it was uh, pretty fast after uh, Tezos was launched. Um, and uh, it's a web wallet. Uh, and uh, it have uh, HD support and uh, ledger support and uh, the, the new feature that maybe I shouldn't <laughs> mention yet. Yeah. Keeping people on their toes, we do have the announcement coming up. So uh, Kukai was one of the original Tezos wallets that supported uh, Tezos uh, uh, shortly after launch. And it has been a constant staple of a wallet supporting the ecosystem since then. And there's been constant upgrades and improvements. Something that I notice most specifically is the UI has drastically in shape has improved since the beginning. And it's something that I find, you know, very easy to use, especially if there's any uh, new users, I would definitely recommend they try Kukai uh, because of how friendly it is for the user. And maybe that's a good segue into the grand announcement that we have today. So go for it, Klaus. Yeah. So we are launching today and it's uh, launched right now, actually. Uh, uh, an uh, direct auth integration into the Kukai wallet. And uh, that's a distributed uh, key management system. And uh, what it means for the users is that uh, they can now in a simple way with just one click, uh, log into Kukai with their OAuth uh, account. For example, a Google account, a Reddit account or a Twitter account and uh, then they will already have a wallet set up for them. And uh, you can also, for example, send uh, Tesos to a Google account uh, or a Reddit account without uh, them having to do anything before because um, the direct uh, auth integration uses uh, uh, the Taurus network that uh, generate uh, the keys uh, in a distributed way. So you have distributed uh, key generation. So that's a really cool feature. And uh, about uh, the, the Taurus network is uh, basically a blockchain agnostic uh, network. Uh, and it's a distributed network with uh, uh, different large uh, ecosystem uh, stakeholders, like uh, for example, Binance uh, run one node and other large players run a node as well. So you have, uh, I think it's around 17 nodes right now that's running the network. Yeah, so in regards to OAuth, that's a really neat feature and uh, especially for onboarding new users. Um, you mentioned that you can only use this for Google, Reddit, or Twitter. Wh why can't you use something like Facebook or yeah. Instagram, uh, for example? That's a good uh, question. Uh, right now, uh, we launch it uh, with support for Google, Twitter, and Reddit, but uh, obviously we can extend it to include uh, more login options and uh, we can uh, so but uh, we kind of want to 
get f feedback from users so we know how to prioritize there but it's uh, possible to uh, also add support for github and uh, discord and uh, a lot of other of uh, uh, logins and wow. uh, maybe something that's uh, interesting to mention is uh, how the login work over OAuth. So basically when you log in with, uh, for example, Reddit, it uses the OAuth uh, login. And uh, so you connect and authenticate uh, through your Reddit account and you get a token in response and uh, you then send that uh, token to the Taurus network as a proof uh, that uh, you have logged in with your username. And then uh, every node in the network respond with a share. So uh, you send uh, this token to all 17 nodes and they respond with uh, as a share. And then you can from that reconstruct uh, the private key on the client side. So the only one that sees the private key in the end is uh, you as a user. So this is this is kind of groundbreaking announcement here where users can now onboard themselves with without having to remember, you know, a large string of letters and numbers for their public key. Well, their Twitter account now becomes a, a wallet, a Tezos wallet, a public key representation. Yeah. And users can send from, you know, one Twitter account to another. Uh, there's a caveat, though. If you're not already following the person on Twitter, they must have DMs enabled. Do you want to talk a little bit, Klaus, about the process of, we'll demo this later for everyone interested in seeing it actually in action. So uh, it might be simpler to understand once it's demoed. But Klaus, if you want to give a little bit of explanation on how the process works from a user perspective. Yeah. Um, regarding the limitations, there, there isn't really a limitation. You can send to anyone, any Twitter handle. Uh, the limitations there with Twitter is that uh, we, we offer the user, when they have sent the uh, Tesos to someone on Twitter, uh, you can send a notification to them. So we have a uh, provide the user with a link they can click on, and that will uh, uh, follow a URI link that will open up Twitter for you and uh, uh, prepare a message that you can send. So, but if you are sending to uh, someone you know on Twitter, then they probably don't have you blocked or anything like that. Right. They <laughs> make sure you're not blocked by anyone before you start sending them uh, yeah. some Tezos uh, via this method. Um, so, Quite interesting. So for everyone watching in the audience, if you had a friend that maybe wasn't technically savvy enough to start using Tezos, this is a good way for you to get them onboarded. Send them some Tez uh, via the Twitter method, via the, the Google email method, or via Reddit, and see if they're able to click that link, authorize the account, and access their Tezos wallet containing the XTZ. Quite cool, and I can't wait for uh, the kind of numbers that come back to see how many people are using this and what kind of community feedback uh, is generated from this. So we really love this and we think it's going to onboard a lot more users into the ecosystem. And it's just going to be uh, one of the many things that will help this ecosystem grow uh, going forward. So I know you went into it a little bit, uh, the Taurus network, um, maybe just some more clarification on what the limitations of the Taurus network are. And you did say that GitHub, and I believe there is Discord as well, um, would possibly be on your roadmap for integration in the future. Uh, but no Facebook, no Instagram to this point, right? Mm, that's true. Uh, Facebook and uh, GitHub is probably the first we have in mind there as, uh, uh, to extend it with first. And uh, regarding the Taurus network, uh, it's not really, it doesn't have its own blockchains since it's a blockchain agnostic. So it's kind of a permissioned network of uh, 17 trusted uh, stakeholders within the blockchain world. Uh, and the, re the reason it's uh, permissioned in that way is to 
protect against the civil attacks. So it's very uh, thought out that way. And uh, you also have uh, uh, protection against uh, front running attacks that uh, could be another potential problem. So another important thing to note is there will be a message that appears when a user attempts to send over 50 XTZ using this method. And it's just to alert them that uh, possibly this isn't the best way to transfer large value transactions because the security of the wallet is tied to the security of your Twitter or of your Gmail or of your Reddit account. So not saying that it's not safe, but let's say your Twitter account was compromised and then theoretically uh, the wallet could be compromised. So ultimately your goal is to drive users to start using the, the XTZ, start sending it back and forth and getting them to learn more about you know, the, the privacy concerns and uh, the ability to onboard them future going down the future into the ledger and using the ledger uh, nano s say to store the asset itself so this is awesome I, I really like this idea of the product and i think we have a question from the audience uh will if you want to go ahead and, and i follow up on that uh, regarding the security the reason we won when someone sent over 50 tests is that um we want to, them to really double check that they have the spelling correct uh, because uh, when you send Tesos to a regular Tesos address, you have a built-in checksum there. So it will detect if, uh, for example, you have one character wrong. But uh, when you send to, uh, let's say, a Reddit uh, account, uh, you, you can't have any spelling mistakes. If you have one uh, character wrong, it will go to the wrong user. So if you do a lot larger transaction, you, you need to make sure that uh, there's no spelling mistakes there. Yeah, so uh, going back to that question from the audience uh, class, could you um, give some input on this? Uh, someone asked, don't you fear that this could be used to scam people? Um, I'm not sure how it would be used to scam people. Um, it, it's a pretty, uh, there's no risk for phishing attacks, for example, because if someone set up a phishing site, uh, it won't resolve the same key. So, because it's uh, tied to uh, Kukai in this case. So, uh, do you have some more context on how people would uh, scam? Right, ah. I think it's it's just, you know, uh, people could use anything to scam. And, you know, this is just mm. a tech piece of technology and we can't really say that this is going to be used for a scam purpose. So always keep that in the back of your mind where, um, you know, this is out there. It's be aware of the technology, be aware of how it's used. And I think this is actually a good segue into the demo so the audience can actually see uh, how the product is used and they can see for themselves what kind of message occurs within a social profile when some test is sent to them. So um, I will give the keyword right now. And just to let everyone know, we are running on a limited time frame today. So uh, the keyword we'll be giving now and we're kind of going to go fast through the demo. So bear with us. And the keyword for the giveaway is exclamation point, Kukai Tacos. And that is a capital K, capital T. So exclamation point, capital K, U, K, A, I, capital T, A, C, O, S. So please enter that keyword in the YouTube chat right now for your chance to win this Ledger Nano S. Thank you, guys. And Klaus, if you want to go ahead with that demo. Mm, sure. Okay, so this is uh, the new feature, direct off, and you simply click here, and then you select uh, uh, what uh, login option you want to use. We can go with Google here, and then you will have to select which uh, Google account you want to use. And then you're logged in. And then, for example, if you want to send to someone, let's say you want to send on uh, 
to someone on Reddit. You select Reddit and enter the username and then uh, an amount. And then you see that uh, it will look up the address uh, to that uh, Reddit user. So you just proceed and then you can double check. So you have the spelling correct and uh, then you verify it and just confirm. Then you will have to authenticate again over OAuth. And then it's uh, sent. Well, that's simple. So you had to authenticate the account, um, but then you just entered the username in this example for Reddit, and then it, it, it confirmed that there was an XTZ address associated with that username. Now, is that yeah. something that will appear when it's the first time you're sending, or is this only something that will appear on the second time or after? Uh, you made a notification in the, the corner. The XTZ address that appeared on the bottom of yeah. the username. Uh, it will uh, always uh, appear. So you will always be able to see the address if you, for example, want to double check, check with the receiver, is this really your address? Okay. And then we can log in on Reddit to look at that. Then you do the same, just accept over OAuth. Then it will resolve your pri private key and log you in. And you can see that we received uh, one test. Very cool. This is so simple compared to, you know, downloading uh, private keys, onboarding with a new with a new public key, and trying to remember what that public key is. It just simplifies the process for bringing in new users. And maybe this yeah. is a good time to show the Twitter, uh, and then I can switch to my screen and, sh and show how it is on the receiving end as well. Sure. And uh, it's uh, primarily onboarding new users we have in mind for this, but uh, I can also see it being used, uh, for example, if you want to play around with uh, different dApps or tokens. Uh, so maybe you use it in uh, combination with, uh, uh, I assume most people probably have their primarily wallet uh, on as a ledger wallet. And uh, then you can use uh, this as, as uh, something to play around with uh, uh, dApps and tokens. Let's see, let's see your Twitter handle there. And just to remind the audience, um, the way to get in contact with Kukai would be on Twitter. They have a account, a username, Kukai Wallet. And on Telegram, it's t.me backslash Kukai Wallet. Sorry about that. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. And then uh, you can, for example, click here if you want to notify the recipient. And then we'll, it will open up a message that you can either just send away or maybe add something else here. And now you should have received five tests. Maybe it's uh, enough for a pizza in Boston. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Let's take a look and see if I have that here on my end. So yeah. I basically am going to share my screen now. All right. Very cool. So Klaus, you just set up a send to my Twitter account at Ken Garofalo. And this was for five Tez. And this is how it looks from the sender's screen. Yeah, exactly. So now it should be on your Twitter account. Alrighty, so everyone just bear with me while I pull up my account. So I'm gonna, before I share my screen, I'm just gonna let you know, uh, so you don't see all of my DMs. I wasn't able to delete all of them in time. Um, I have a message, it came from Klaus's account. It tells me, hi. I sent you five Tez using the Kukai wallet. You can access Tezos wallet with your Twitter account and it gives me a link. So it's app backslash direct auth. I click that link and I will now, 
enable the screen share so you guys can see what I'm doing in one moment. You just bear with me. And here it is, sharing. Okay, you guys see that here? Yeah. Hmm. You have to okay. accept the privacy policy. Bottom accept. right corner. Ah, it's important <laughs> to note. So this little privacy policy you must policy you must click accept. Okay, there we go. Now the screen lights up. So I'm logging in with my Twitter account. If you had if you had Tez sent to your Google account or your Reddit account, you would log in with those respectively. Uh, but for me, this is with Twitter. I'm going to authorize the app. This is the direct auth. Some great UI there. Look at that little loading circle of all the colors. I just love that. <laughs> and so here it is. I have received the five Tez from Clusair. So perfect. And I'm gonna be generous and I'm gonna actually send this back to the Gmail account. I, I could keep it, right? Like there's nothing stopping me here. <laughs> but we all know each other, so I'll send it back. So Clasair at Gmail, I'm gonna click send. Here I can enter the amount. It's gonna be five Tez, or actually it won't be five Tez because I'm gonna pay some gas. So what I'm gonna do is click uh, send max, right? And here I'm going to, instead of a Tezos address, I'm gonna have Google account since it looks like that's where it came from the Gmail account, that's what I have for Clasair. And we can go ahead, see Max again, and it loads that address in the bottom that we saw before. So this is uh, a public address associated with this email address. So I'm gonna click preview. It gives me a summary here. So I'm sending my amount of Tez back to Clasair to his Gmail account, to this address. And it's coming from my Twitter account, which is this address here and you see the small fee, very small fee. Um, I don't even know what that is in terms of dollar, but I, I believe it's less than a penny, which is exciting to see compared to other networks. So excellent, I hit send, it asked me to authorize one more time. Another beautiful UI window, and sending transaction, there it is, perfect. Unconfirmed, but once it confirms, we will see it there, and I believe we can even view it on the Block Explorer as well doesn't exist yet, hasn't confirmed yeah. yet, guys. So once it confirms, yeah. it will show. Exactly. I think it's a good time to uh, talk about the limits. Uh, I believe whenever you try to send a certain amount, a warning sign shows up uh, at a max of 50 TES. Um, can you talk about that, class? Uh, sure. Uh, we will, if you try to send more than 50 tests uh, with uh, direct auth, we will give you a warning that you should uh, double check your email address or right. username for the recipient. And that's uh, basically because if there's any typo, uh, it won't go to the direct, uh, to the correct uh, recipient. Right. And it's also important to note that uh, the address that you're going to send the test to, you need to be very character spe uh, specific because it will be lost if you send it to the wrong email address. Yeah, exactly. And uh, But it's not uh, case uh, sensitive for the Google accounts, Reddit, oh, okay. Twitter. But uh, maybe some login options we add in the future will be case sensitive. Yeah, so actually speaking on the future, um, what is the roadmap looking like for Kakai? So the next things we have uh, planned uh, after this release uh, is uh, uh, token support and uh, also support for TCIP uh, 10. So it will, um, uh, and uh, it can be used uh, together with the uh, direct auth. So you can use uh, TCIP 10 to uh, interact in an easy way with um, different dApps. I don't know if you're familiar. Uh, some people are probably familiar to TCIP 10, but um, uh, that's a standard for how you can communicate between uh, wallets and uh, dApps. So you exchange, uh, for example, the operation payload that the wallet should uh, sign and then the, the wallet uh, uh, shows you what what the operation will do before you sign it 
So it's a standard for that, make it easy. And right. for the token support, uh, uh, there's another st standard that have been in progress for uh, how the metadata for different contracts uh, should be handled. Uh, so if uh, someone that uh, cre creates a, a token follow that standard, the metadata will be easily available for uh, wallets and uh, indexes. So that, um, and that, that's something that have been in the works for a while and uh, uh, it's uh, starting to become complete. So in uh, Kukai's case, it means that uh, we will have a, an easy way to discover different kind of tokens and also get the metadata we need to uh, show the give the user a friendly interface and so they can interact with the tokens. Right, and in regards to uh, discovery, um, it's my understanding that Kakai wants to have general discovery. Um, can you talk about the difference between that and perhaps the opposite? Sure. Um, right now, for example, if someone uh, deploy a new uh, token, uh, then uh, uh, for that to work with a wallet, uh, you might need to add, add it as a custom integration and uh, update uh, the wallet software. But uh, with uh, this uh, standardized uh, uh, approach, uh, uh, we can uh, potentially add the uh, tokens into Kukai without having to update the, the, the wallet. So that's really interesting. And it, it also makes it uh, easier to uh, discover different uh, tokens that the uh, user holds. For example, if you only have custom integrations, then you maybe need to uh, look at uh, a lot of different contracts, but uh, with this uh, standard uh, uh, indexes can uh, automatically um, uh, fetch uh, the metadata and provide it to the wallet. So say, I'm just trying to understand this discoverability uh, to an asset here. So say there's an asset that exists and you want it to show up on the wallet interface. Uh, will there just be a drop down menu that shows once this feature is enabled that shows all the different tokens within the index or will you still have to enter some sort of contract address to make that token discoverable within the wallet? So what you need to do is that uh, you deploy your token and then uh, there's a, uh, I think it's a register uh, uh, on chain. Uh, but um, the metadata uh, can actually live uh, either on chain or off chain, but uh, the most common will probably be that uh, uh, DAP develop or token developers uh, store it uh, off chain since that's uh, cheaper and you don't need to store everything on chain. It's enough uh, that you, for example, store a hash uh, on chain and then have all the actual data uh, off chain. So you kind of use the, uh, the blockchain as a root of trust. Awesome, yeah, that's some great insights there. And uh, maybe Will, this is a good time to announce our winner of the Tezos Engraved Ledger Nano S. We always love this part of the episode where we like to give back to the community I mean, these ledgers are going for, you know, near $100 or more. So this is quite a awesome gift that we're able to give away every episode. We really thank the audience for watching. Again, this is Tez Talks, uh, an episode, uh, a show created by Tezos Commons. And again, every episode we give one of these Ledger Nano S's away. So without further ado, today's winner. Yeah, so uh, today's winner is one second. And 
maybe this is a good time for Klaus to say um, any kind of integration for Ledger with Kukai. You said there there was integration, right? Yeah, exactly. We have uh, Ledger support today. So it's probably what you want to use uh, if you have uh, a lot of tests. But th th then you should definitely try out the uh, direct auth integration as well with some yes. small amount. So, so the winner is Danny Goldbolt. Uh, Danny, you're going to have to send an email over to social at tezoscommons.org and uh, we're going to request that you have a screenshot to verify that you actually uh, are using that YouTube account. And congratulations on winning your ledger. Awesome, congratulations there, Danny. And Klaus, as we wrap up this episode, I wonder, is there anything that you haven't said yet that you wanna let the audience know about Kukai and this new direct auth, OAuth feature, or even the roadmap? Uh, yeah. I think people can, uh, they should try it out and uh, then they can leave feedback uh, on our Telegram channel, maybe about uh, what the next uh, uh, sign-in option they want to see in Kukai. That would be awesome. I want to see everyone in the community uh, from Citizen B, Citizen.Tez to uh, Jovan Smith to all, all these legendary uh, Tezos community members. I want to see you guys testing out this direct auth OAuth feature of Kukai Wallet. And I want to see you guys giving feedback in the Telegram channel for Kukai Wallet. Again, that's t.me backslash Kukai Wallet. Also, you could uh, do a screenshot of your transaction and tag Kukai Wallet on Twitter at Kukai Wallet. So a lot of different ways to interact with Kukai Wallet on social, on Telegram. Try this feature out and tell us how you like it. All right, guys, that was a really exciting episode today. Really cool feature that Klaus introduced. So again, you have all the links uh, to Kukai Wallet. It is as well, the website is wallet.kukai.app. Is that right, Klaus? Do I have that right or is it? Yeah, that's correct. Or just uh, kukai.app and you will get there as well. Kukai.app, perfect. So we hope more users will try this feature out. And again, if you'd like to know more information on Tezos Commons or find more information on our upcoming schedule of guests, you can go to tezoscommons.org backslash Tez Talks. For Klaus and Will, my name is Ken. Thank you for watching, everyone. Until next time, take care.